Hello, friends. Welcome to the Show to Be Named Later podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Voss, along with our good friend, Noah Storzinger, down in KC, Missouri. And uh, yeah, during the summer, we don't... Uh, we don't always go religiously, I guess, uh, as far as our, our recordings, but that's fine because as Noah likes to say, it's, it's life, life happening, but, uh, we still have a lot to cover anything off, uh, right off the top, uh, top of your head there. Uh, you know, I think for me, the, the first thing that pops up is, uh, some disappointing baseball recently. I don't know what your thoughts are. Uh, I had the twins at the top of the list and, um, I guess the the main reason that I want because I mean because you know there's a lot going on with the Olympics. Vikings are starting up. We will cover that. Uh, but I to me I, I thought that the Minnesota Twins were at the at the top and and the reason being is because you know when when they got out of the All Star break uh, I wasn't you know the the series with the Brewers kind of disappointing and 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 I I just keep wondering how is it that we are. We're, we're three and a half games out right now and we're three and a half games behind the best team in baseball right now. The, the Cleveland Indians have the best record in baseball. And I just keep wondering how it is that now we'll get to Cleveland uh, in a, in a second, but we'll set it up. Uh, it is currently the day before a huge homestand against uh, the division leading Cleveland Indians. And then KC's right around the corner, which I guess I, I never thought of having to worry about Cleveland and or uh, Kansas city in August. Um, but there are some glaring disappointing things that we have to cover going into this, um, into this series. And yeah, that, that Cubs series was, uh, was pathetic, but um, here's the thing. First, first things, are you worried? I mean, you you probably get a little more uh, a little more hype down where you're at. Are you worried? Because a lot of my friends are like, hey, we don't have to worry about Cleveland. We got to worry about Kansas City, or at least for the playoff spot that's coming up if we don't win the division. Are you concerned about Kansas City? And what's the vibe down there as far as are, are people embracing this team after being a, a seller dweller for so long? They, they are in the sense of, you know, even when I was there opening day, they had made some moves and there was some hype around Kansas City. And, you know, talking to a couple guys down there, you know, it was they were excited. They made some moves and they were putting their team at, you know, I think we could win 75 games this year, you know, make it a little interesting, 75, 80 games. Um, and I mean, right now, I think they're almost at 70 wins uh, on the year. So. Um, it, it's this, they're, they're embracing the team because of how low these expectations were coming into the right. year. And so for a team to be in playoff contention in August, I mean, yeah, it's a little, it's a little scary for the, for some twins fans. Um, I, I think what's happening in Kansas city is they're riding the highs of a lot of guys that aren't necessarily going to do this in the future, a Seth Lugo, um, uh, uh, Salvi Perez is, is not going to hit like he, he has been he's still uh, the best catcher. You know, moving Sorry, he, He's still the best catcher in the um, game, in my opinion, but I he, love that guy. I think he is. No, I agree. I just, you know, it, I, I think it would take one domino to fall for that team to, to, to start to lose it. Just Bobby Witt is, is freaking insane. Um, Absolute stud. Absolute stud. He is. And, 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 you know, but after that, you, you know, you're riding a Michael Walker, a Seth Lugo, Salvi, and, and some guys that are stepping up. It's cool to see. Um, I don't know how sustainable it is. I think it's a it's one of those fringy, um, scrappy playoff teams that, that might be tough, uh, especially down the stretch. I think you're looking at either Kansas City or Boston taking that third spot. But I Cleveland's lost five straight, so I, I don't yeah. know what to make of it anymore. Well, that, that's what I wanted to get into because, you know, for me, I it, and going in the All Star break, I really had, I, I, I really had a feeling that the, the Twins are going to catch Cleveland eventually, and and you you looked at, you know, I would say, how are we three and a half games back? But 
Cleveland did not go into the all-star break very hot. In fact, that they were, they were pretty piss poor and out of the break, they, they, they have not looked good at all. You know, they got, and, and what I like going into this series now they played, they lost a double header yesterday to Arizona. Now they got another double header uh, coming up against the twins to start out on Friday. Uh, and, and so I like this chance. Now uh, I read, uh, I think it, the, the stat was, the Twins have a 28% chance, I think they said, to win the division, which I disagree wholeheartedly until we get to what we need to talk about here uh, about our own team. And then I think they had like a 78% chance to make the playoffs. I got to believe that those two categories are a little higher for the Twins. I mean, I just do not. Yeah, the, Cleveland, the best team in baseball right now, but I just don't have a lot of faith that they are going to be around I mean, they'll be around. I just don't think that they're going to run away with anything. And it's 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 the Twins' uh, division, playoff spot, whatever you know, for is theirs for the taking. Now, going into that though, uh, the first thing that came to mind when I think about this upcoming series is I don't know if you remember a couple years ago uh, when the Twins had all the, the injury problems, but they were still in it at the end of the year. Like we're talking like September had a huge uh, series against Cleveland. And I think we got swept uh, and we had a triple a lineup out there. And that's kind of what it's feeling right. Like right now, man. I mean, it, you're, you're not, I mean, we're going to go down the list, but you start with Correa, that guy's not even sprinting yet. And I don't think you're going to see him. Well, we know we're not going to see him for Cleveland, but I don't think you're going to see him for Kansas City either. He wants to go down to St. Paul and and rehabilitate uh, first because he said that he's not comfortable with this swing, but he ain't even started running yet. And the longer, I mean, I was watching the game the other night and my buddy is just like, man, we need Correa back. And I was like, yeah, that is, that is, that is evident right now. It is. And, and yeah, I don't think we're going to see him till if I'm being honest, I don't think we're getting him till September. I, 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 I just know. think that the way that it's been managed, I, not that I want to blame him for anything. I think Rocco has a lot of blame to do for, for a lot of this, especially even Mr. Buxton, who I, at this point, I, I don't know that we'll see him. Rocco said, well, there's no doubt in my mind, he will, he will be playing the, the Cleveland series. I, I can't trust that at all right. um you know you just lost joe ryan who wasn't going to yep. pitch in this series but joe ryan's a big one um and and guys that just aren't necessarily hitting uh to to what you need i mean brooks lee has been okay not really um yeah, yeah he's, royce is royce and that's uh, fine. He's a rookie, so i i can give him that but that i think goes back to the point that we've been making all year um that if you're going to put all your eggs in a young young man's basket, uh, you're. I think you're tempting fate here. Now you go back to Buxton. I think we'll see Buxton in the Cleveland series. But you know, last night when I was watching it at a buddy's house and uh, or yesterday afternoon, and I'm like, man, this is three days in a row. He did hit that wall pretty hard. I just figured, okay, you got a day off today. Give him one more day to recuperate. I believe Rocco said that he would have been available yesterday had we needed him. Um, but yep, you know, I don't want to go down that Buxton road again. And then you want to talk about Joe Ryan. I mean, that just that, you know, and he said he swam in the lake before his start. Don't fucking swim in Lake Michigan before, before your, your scheduled start, man, that to me, um, but you know, Joe Ryan, they're talking, he's going to be, I will be lucky if he misses 15 games the way that it sounded this morning. And that is a huge matzo ball that's hanging out there right now because what I said about two years ago going into Cleveland and just laying a shit burger, listen to who we got going our first two games in the in the doubleheader on Friday. You got Louis Varland, which I said, as soon as Ryan went down, I go, well, welcome back, Louis Varland. Fuck. Uh, and so in, the, in the, the doubleheader, you got Ober and Varland, and they have not, stated which one's going to pitch which game. I, I got to believe that you got to go with Ober in the first game because if you go with Varlin the first game, you're going to eat up your bullpen, and then you've got no bullpen left for game two and hoping that, that Ober can pitch. But Varlin, you'll be lucky if he gives you four innings, don't you think? 
I, at this point, yeah. Now, I mean, his last start he had in, the, in uh, up in the majors was was okay. Um, I mean, his AAA numbers this past however many starts have been really, really good. So, I, I mean, there's that positive out of it. Am I scared? R- yeah, I'm fucking terrified for him to pitch yeah. against Cleveland. Um, but in the in the just thinking about the future, like this is why the owners need to just this is where it becomes evident that you needed to go get a starting pitcher because at the deadline because you were one injury away from from this catastrophe and you're looking at at this point i mean if you're in the wild card series you got pablo you got bailey ober and then what you start simeon woods richardson in a playoff game i don't think so absolutely not no I, I know it. And I'm looking at our, our rotation right now. And like you say, and like, you know, Pablo had three pretty strong starts and then he looked like shit against the Cubs who are a last place team in their division. Okay. So you've got, you've got Pablo, which has not been a happy Pablo day. Most of the year, you've got Bailey Ober, who might be the best guy that we've got on in this rotation right now. Woods Richardson that you're, you're asking a lot. Festa, who looked good for five innings, but you're asking a lot again from a rookie. And now Varlin, who I just do not have faith in, um, you know, it ain't coming up all mill millhouse here. And, and that's, I, I think is, is extremely concerning because if we're not hitting the ball, what was it? Uh, uh, two nights ago, we were in that game and we had had three hits the whole game. Yeah. They were all extra base hits, two home runs and a double who gives a shit. And, and so if you're not going to hit the ball and, and, and you don't have guys that are stepping out, Will Castro right now is the MVP of this team. I'm sorry. He is. Um, but it's, you know, and it's not even good. I mean, did you happen to see the one, cause we're going to get to the La Pola Nostra in a second, but did you happen to catch our only uh, big deal that we made before the deadline, Mr. Richards, Looks like Sam Bakula at 50 years old. That was ridiculous. And and I remember, oh, it wasn't like I was all over the page. Are you kidding? He said, most of those were strikes that I'll get. No, you walked how many guys in one inning, and then you had two wild pitches with the bases loaded. The guy looked terrible. And then all they did was praise Cole Sands about why we can use him. And every time we, we have a bullpen problem or we say, who do we put in Cole Sands name comes up. Are you kidding me? Ugh. I like Sorry. Cole Sands. Okay. All right. All right. I, I uh, didn't at the beginning of the year, you could go back and I, I was not a Cole Sands guy this year. He's, he's changed my mind a little bit. Um, I, I do want to point, point out one thing. And I knew we've, we talked about him. uh, before um or you know today um just a little positive about this twin season and i know he's been out for three days but i do want to commend the season that byron buxton is having this year your thoughts i i I, i'll give i'll give you that bucks and that's why we need him in in the lineup uh for sure and you know they they seem to be high on austin martin but there's something about that guy i mean just even catching a lazy fly ball and the guy tags up on him and he's just doing it all kind of nonchalant. It's fine. He's young. That's okay. The, the biggest, I guess the biggest, it's not a problem though, because we know what we're dealing with, but Falvin had the balls to go on record the other day to say, well, every time I've asked the poll, you, you got it all wrong with the poll ads because every time I've asked them for, for money or for, for this or that or the other thing, they've never said no. Are you kidding me? You're really going to try to sell that bill of sales to it? You're, you're going you're gonna to try to get the, the Twins fan base to believe that whatever the, the poll ads just give you a blank fucking check? I don't buy that for a second. He's, he's got a gun to the head when he is saying that, that shit to, to the media, because, and here's the thing I, I am, I am, I think the way that the poll ads have drafted or not the poll, I think the way that, um, Felvey has, has, has drafted, I think 
some of these free agent signings, the way he has built this team has been very, very good. And I think he is becoming a very, very good front office guy. And I think if the Polets are going to cash strap him for years and years, I mean, why the hell is he going to want to stay here? We're, we're going to lose, I think, a very, very good executive um, to a team that will like, hey, man, you want to spend money? Come out here and spend some right. money because we've seen him. He wants to spend money on a Carlos Correa. He wants to spend money and go get a Pablo Lopez. Um, and he's just – there's no way the Polets are telling him, yeah, you can go do it. Uh, like there's no way it was his idea to say we're going to save 30 40 million on the payroll this year no way right and and you know in the same breath he told us about how um there was no way that they could get a deal now i don't i don't know if flaherty if they if if the, i mean i think detroit probably would have played harder ball dealing flaherty to a division um, you know, and I don't know about the White Sox because they're so far down the beaten path, you know, and they they did deal their guy uh, to, to my other team, the, the St. Louis Cardinals. But Falvin's claim that the only way that any deal could have been made for someone that was going to help this team was um, if we would have given up guys like Walker, Walker Jenkins. And and I just I, I don't know if that's he he brought up Jenkins and they were they were all high prospects. Not as high as like Brooks Lee or anything like that, but Walker Jenkins, I know, was one of them. Um, the I think the catcher down in St. Paul, it was all, you know, a huge prospect or bust. This is the only way that a deal gets done. And I don't I don't know if I'm buying that either. So I, I'm half buying it and 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 half not buying it only because I, the deals that were made this trade deadline, the prospects that were dealt. It, it was it was a high asking price for a lot of guys. So yeah. I can I can see where he was coming from in the sense of like from what I heard from they for for Flaherty, I, I believe they they had a not a deal in place, but they were having ongoing conversations for Flaherty with Detroit. But they started the conversation at, you know, we want Walker Jenkins and we want either Luke Kieschel or um David Festa or or something like that. Uh, I heard which, that as well. Yep. Yep. Which was just too high, and and you know what I, I I would have rather kept on to those prospects if I'm being honest um, to get absolutely. I I don't think Flaherty or, or Fetty right from the White Sox. Like the, I don't think that those guys were going to put us over the top enough that you wanted to give up what you were going to give up for that. You know, and Flaherty was only a four month rental anyways, right? Like he's his contract's yeah. up at the end of the year, right? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, but to me, the way that this whole year has been run as far as bringing anything extra, because I've had this conversation with a number of my friends, saw a good buddy that I hadn't talked to in a long time, a long time twins fan. And every single one I bring up, I'm like, well, what about Falvin's telling us that? And he said, he stopped me and he said, I already know what you're going to say that, uh, Getting guys back off the off the IL is just like bringing free agents in, and that's bullshit. You don't you, you don't start out with a team on opening day and then lose them through the course of the year and then bring them back off the injured list and then go, hey, it's just like we signed a new friend. No, those are the guys you went into the year with. the The reason for acquiring guys outside of your team is to make your team better. So I'm not buying any of that bullshit about. Getting getting guys back when they were hurt is just like adding free agents to your team. It, it's bullshit. It's the stupidest thought process ever, ever. And and they are they are slowly changing people's minds, especially on Twitter. From what I've seen, is I've seen that comment so many times of like, "Whoa, we're getting Carlos Correa back." It's basically like getting a new free agent. No, stop it. You're believing the bullshit lies that they're trying to tell you about being cheap. There were plenty of even relievers out there, yeah. not a guy that had a four or five ERA from Toronto. There are plenty of relievers out there that they could have went out and got for a decent price. I would have been completely okay with giving up some good prospects for some good bullpen help because, you know, you're going to need it. Or or even, I don't even know. I, I wouldn't have wanted, I'm trying to think of a lower starter. Like Michael Lorenzen went to Kansas City. I don't, I didn't need a Michael Lorenzen right. to be honest, but right. But now that I think about it, I mean, with Joe Ryan going out, 
fuck yeah, I'd take Michael Lorenzen for a medium prospect yeah. or whatnot. But but I don't know. I, it's just lies that they're bullshitting now. It's stupid. I agree. I agree. Now, um, what what is your prediction? Because not only do we have. You know, we got four games with Cleveland coming up, three games with KC. I believe 16 of our next 20 are against winning teams. Okay. What what what's your prediction going into the seven game homestand? Because initially I was like, oh, you got to sweep Cleveland. Now I'm open maybe that we just split with them. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking we I'm gonna say we split Cleveland. I'm I, I think we'll take the series with KC. We're at home. Um, it, you know, so I think you go, what is that? Five and three, uh, with, with these, these eight games, uh, or four and three, I should say, um, yeah, four, and three. four and three, good math that I, I, but that, that's not going to be good enough. In, in my opinion, it's not going to be good enough, especially when you're at home and especially the fact that you're still going to be playing some good teams after that fact. You know what I mean? And and so like, you know, the dog days of summer, August, that's when you start thinking that divisions are going to be won or lost. And and that's what, and, and I'm sorry, we don't have, it, you know, we don't have our best team going forward right now. And I understand that injuries happen over 162 games. That is a part of the game. Um, Unfortunately, it seems like we're getting a lot of that. Like, I think Royce just got a day off yesterday just because he needed a day off. But man, uh, you're scraping at the because Kyle Farmer's on on uh, rehab right now, and he's going to be up soon. And I'm telling you, man, you're scraping from the bottom of the barrel going into probably the most important stretch of the season right now. Now, it's a funny stat with Kyle Farmer. Um, He's having a horrible year, but there's a stat that when he plays the game, we win. It's like 80% of those games that he plays in, we win. Um, wow. And we have a losing record when he's not in. So maybe it's that vet leadership and maybe it's that vet that you kind of want for the postseason. So I'm optimistic for Kyle Farmer to come back, but I, I don't know. Um, I'm looking at the, the standings and, and, you know, potential matchups. I know it's, we got two more months of the season left, yeah. but I'm looking at, so if we were to get this second wild card spot, which we've been entrenched in for a while, the most likely team you play in a three game series and we'd be on the road would be the Yankees. And they don't so somehow one, scoop me out though this year. They don't. A, and, and, a you know, series we, at Yankee stadium. Hey, if we exercised our demons last year by just winning a series, the Yankees team this year, I, I think that the Twins would have their best opportunity against the Yankees in the playoffs this year than the last 20 years. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, <coughs> I think... That's if Judge doesn't not play. That I want us, well, <laughs> not that I want us to get this... Uh, the third seed or the third wild card, but then you go play likely right now, Seattle at, at, at Seattle. And, and I would take a three game series with Seattle. Over yeah, I would take that New too. York. Anyway. I'm saying don't, don't even fuck around with the wild card, win the division. Okay. Well, and have well. home games. And then you don't have to worry because you know, here has been the scuttlebutt with a lot of my friends. Like I say, I've been, talking to guys that I haven't talked to most of the summer. Um, it's kind of nice to get back and, and, and just kind of chew the fat about, about the team that we love. And the one reoccurring theme and everything that we talked about, it has been, the question has been like, Johnny, we get to the playoffs, then what? And, and I think we've been saying that all year, that this is a team that I believe is going to be is playoff bound. They, they'll make the playoffs but they're not going to do anything once they get to the playoffs. And, and and unless something, like I say, like an Arizona, uh, Texas thing from last year, I don't see the twins as a, and you know, last year you had all this enthusiasm, all this excitement going into the playoffs and thinking we might, we might, we might get to the world series this year. This year I would be happy 
with a playoff victory. I'm not talking about a series, motherfucker. I'm talking about a one win in the playoffs because that's where I think we're, we're that's the road that I think we're down right now. Yeah, I, I agree. And I just, they just don't have enough pitching. And, and I, I no. think you, you have the offense to, to absolutely win some playoff games and series, but you, we saw how important pitching was in the playoffs first yep. and last year. And we just don't like Bailey over was, was an afterthought in the playoffs last year. And he's shaping up to be the, the ACE and I get it. He's had a phenomenal year. I, I love Bailey over. Um, but, but I don't, I, I just, I don't know at this point. Exactly. How I feel about well, it. the way, except for his last start, uh, Woods Richardson is almost making a, making a play for the number two spot, man. I mean, and, and like I say, I just don't think, but you know, yesterday when I'm watching a game with P, I was like, when the bullpen came, it was right down at Richards, Sand, fucking Caleb Theobar, all of it. I was just, and I know it's one game, whatever, but I mean, nothing screamed confidence. As soon as Ryan went out of the game, I'm like, oh, damn, you know, and, and so I, I, I don't know. Uh, I am hoping for a four and three, which is terrible to think you got a seven game homestand and you're trying to win the division. You should go, well, no, we should be five and two or six and one. That's what good teams do. Um, but like I say, you're not playing the white, the white Sox every, because that, and that's another thing. The white Sox had what lost 16 in a row or whatever, going into that series with the twins. And, I thought for sure we were going to end their streak and we didn't do it. Uh, you know, so, you know, let's, I guess, go with some positives that, that showed me some things. Yeah. That was a good God. That is a horrible baseball team though. Jesus. Oh my goodness. Hey, could you imagine like, uh, I, I brought this up to my buddies the other day. Like I think when they finally, when they finally ended this streak and I was like, it was against Oakland. Right. And I'm like, can you imagine what kind of, torture like what crime have you committed where they sentence you to have to go watch oakland chicago play baseball you know what i mean and i, I love baseball and i can watch it from little league all the way up you know minor league major league obviously i can watch slow pitch softball but there is no way that you could get me to go to a white Sox athletics game right i and the only other thing oh well the marlins are in town right after chicago okay well you know so there you go. Well, they they fired their manager today. Chicago did. Yep. I didn't even know who their manager was. Pedro Griffol. And who did they? Who's who's now their manager? I have no idea. I just Ron, saw that they nope. they fired him. And okay. Who? Well, God, God bless them, because uh, they are they don't have a bright future either. You know, there are some people that say. Maybe Chicago, you know, it's not big enough to have two teams any longer. And there are some folks that say <clears throat> maybe the White Sox time uh, is at an end in Chicago. I mean, I've, I've been hearing that for a long time, though, in the early 90s. They talked about them, the White Sox, moving to Tampa Bay before the Devil Rays were there. So uh, you never know how this is going to gonna work out. But, uh, yeah, the White Sox are, are junk. Um, all right. <laughs> Here is something I was wondering what your thoughts are because uh, really, I don't like I said, I was talking with some buddies and, and uh, one of my buddies, I, I kind of feel sorry for him, but he was hyping that Saturday night, another Minnesota team has a ball game, our Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> okay. And he was all excited because he wanted to see, JJ and he wanted to see Sam Darnold and why I feel sorry for my buddy is because he is so optimistic. He thinks Sam Darnold is going to be good. He just, he just has had poor opportunities with the teams that he's been with. He even tried to tell me, well, you know, the Niners dude, they were thinking about bench and Purdy and bringing Sam Darnold in. And I was like, yeah, but guess what? They didn't. And they made it to the Super Bowl, whatever. Uh, that's not going to happen. He's so excited. He's like, I'm going to see. First of all, I can't get excited about preseason. No matter if I want to see our our, our brand new draft choice, um, I want to see what I, I just I cannot. It, it, 
watching preseason NFL football to me is like watching a White Sox athletics game. It, it just, I can't do it. All right. So <laughs> yeah, I guess I, you know, I, I obviously I'll watch it, but I'm not excited the way that I guess, you know, some of the, what the VWO, the Vikings world order, they get all excited and want to paint their faces for this game or whatever. I don't care because I don't think you're going to learn a lot about anything by watching uh, the preseason game on Saturday night. Yeah. It, you know, if I'm being honest, I completely forgot they preseason started there on, on Saturday for them. Um, Cause yeah, I don't really watch preseason. I'll, I'll watch a highlight or two if some cool happen, but um, you know, I, I want, <laughs> I'm not like overly optimistic with uh, Sam Darnold, but I'm, I'm optimistic um, because I think your buddy has, I, I think your buddy has some points in the sense of like, this guy was highly touted and had absolutely nothing in with, with the jets. Um, and I, I think he has a similar road to a Baker Mayfield story. Do I think he's going to hit that? No. But when you think about it, he's got some amazing offensive weapons to use who he never had before. He, he, he does just, remember that he's going to be without one of those offensive weapons for the first three games of the season, I believe. Right. Uh, right. Jordan Addison's out the first three games, correct? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Um, they did, uh, list Aaron Jones as the number one running back. Um, I don't know about TJ. Is he going to be ready for, for game one? Probably not. Right. Uh, but, no, but here's no. the deal. Here's the deal. You look, if you look at the schedule, and this is what I, I told my, my, my buddy yesterday, I was like, the Vikings might be lucky if they're one in five to start the season. If you well, take a look at the schedule. No, I'm not, I'm not being Mr. Negative right now. I'm just saying, take a look at the schedule and maybe hope that the defense will, will get us through. But, um, and if you are now talking about a one and five team with Sam Darnold at the helm, uh, you're going to be, and, and I'll be honest, I don't know if I want to see JJ this year. I would, I would be okay with him sitting the entire year. If you want to bring, I, I love it. The star tribune referred to Mullins as a, as a gunslinger. I, I don't know why that is, uh, when you have more interceptions and touchdowns, that's not really slinging the guns. Um, but my, my point is, I guess at 21 years old, I would rather that JJ just sits the whole year. And, and instead of throwing them to the lions, especially if, if, if you start the season out one and five, maybe just allow well, And you know, and the one thing that I, the point that I made, I don't care who's our quarterback. J, uh, Jefferson has proven that it doesn't matter who's throwing the ball. He might throw three interceptions, but Jefferson's still going to get 100 yards receiving. He proved that against Detroit last year in a game that really, I don't know if it, I mean, he's an absolute stud. So you're going to get that. I just don't know if it, if it's, and remember Cousins, it took a while for him to figure out KOC's playbook. Okay. I don't know if that's right for a rookie quarterback right now. So I guess if I had my druthers, I would just say ride this out and let JJ take it next year. I think JJ, you'll see him after week six, after the bye. Um, it, it sounds like from what I've seen, he is, he is really impressing uh, at, at training camp right now. Um, so I, I'm, I'm curious to see now I'm looking at their schedule. Um, the Giants are the Wait, only well, one that I think we got a shot ahead. <laughs> okay, so I, here's the thing. I think you start – I think through these five weeks, uh, I think they'll end up going into the bye two and three. I think who, they'll who, beat New who are York. The and, in? Both New York teams. <laughs> okay. The Giants and the Jets. Well, then that, we got screwed out of that because that, that second New York game is against the Jets and Aaron Rodgers, and – that is technically a Vikings home game, but it's played in Europe, right? Which 
means that yep. we get screwed out of watching Aaron Rodgers break his shoulder on our home turf again. It, it just, it's it just ridiculous. And, and like, I, I, I almost want to think that the NFL did that as a courtesy to Aaron Rodgers. You know what I mean? Like, uh, oh, we feel bad that you lost all last year. So we're not going to put you into an environment where, you know, so fine. All the people eating fish and chips are going to enjoy watching. I just, now here's the thing. <clears throat> An article in the Star Tribune uh, this morning about how KOC is not, literally, he, he went through the depth chart because he, he listed Aaron Jones as number one running back. But he is not named a number two quarterback as of yet. And so to me, that that tells you one of two things. Uh, it, it tells you that either JJ is not ready. Now you said he's a, he's, been, he's looked good in practice, but he's not ready to assume that role of the number two quarterback as the star tribune brought up this morning. That means that you're one play away from actually being the starting quarterback, because if something happens to your starting quarterback, he gets injured, boom, you're in. Um, but they're not willing to commit that Mullins is the number two guy because you don't want to knock him down a peg down to number three and maybe mess with his confidence or whatever it is. Uh, either way, is it is it O'Connell playing possum and just not tipping his hand, uh, or does he really not fucking know what he's going to do uh, yet? as far as the, the depth chart with the quarterback situation, because I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I think he just doesn't know. I, Cause I, I mean, he, there's not a clear answer at this point. I mean, it, at least with Mullins, he's got some experience. Um, and that's not great, but uh, you know, it, it, at least it's someone who could, who could go in and knows the playbook a little bit. And, but you know, I, we forget, we still got Jaron Hall. Uh, not well, that I want him playing. That's just, it. that's just it. And they and they did make that point about where does JJ fit? You know, you'd you'd like to see him higher than Darren Hall. Uh, I I mean I I just don't know. I mean, and what do you do with Hall? I think you gotta you gotta deal him, right? I I think you trade him for a, a pick or two, um, just because I think he's got more. Because you, you're not going to get anything from Mullins. Um, you know, at least Jaron Hall still has that kind of raw talent, you know, that someone could unlock. Um, so I think you could get something for him. And I just – because he's not going to play this year. He's not. So, you know, no. why don't you deal him? Get something for him. Well, you never know, though. I mean, remember, we did have a guy by the name of Josh Dobbs last year. Like, that was – I I don't think in 50 years of being on this planet, I don't think that I would ever have said, yeah, I think Josh Dobbs is going to start for the Minnesota Vikings. You know what I mean? Like it just, so, so you just, you, de you don't ever know. I, um, you know, I got a buddy that you mark my words, dude, Hall's going to be good, dude. He's going to be, he's going to be an NFL quarterback. I don't see that maybe at, at least as a starting quarterback in the NFL. Um, but maybe, maybe he'd be a good, Good backup, and he he would be trade trade bait. Yeah, I think he's got a ceiling of a backup. Um, I I just from from what I saw, and I understand he had a concussion, and and he looked good for that one drive, and then we brought no him way. back for the Green Bay game. And it just looked yep. atrocious. So yep. I don't know. I mean, it's it's hard to tell. Uh, let's switch gears here now. Uh, uh, I think final maybe final thing that that we cover. Uh, today the olympics and uh i don't know i've i've been pleased with the olympics um this year uh some of the you know i i've always liked the track and field the the, the sprinting is pretty cool and that photo finish was was pretty dope um and the the other one where we got the i think we got the gold and the and the silver uh that was the the long distance one and no one gave us a shot at that um but Let's go with basketball because as far as the Olympics go, it's really the only thing that I can talk with any kind of, I guess, what I think I have knowledge on, on the subject. Um, as of right now, we are uh, 
just moments away from the U.S. men's basketball team uh, in their semifinal game against Serbia. And uh, I'm watching France and Germany right now. It's a pretty tight one. Uh, that's who hopefully will play the winner in the gold medal game. Um, you know, maybe Johnny was wrong on some things, and that's okay. I can be wrong. I said that the that the men's team might be setting us up for a fall based on some things. It looks like they have figured some things out. Um, I was talking to a buddy yesterday. I was like, did you watch the game against Brazil? He said, yeah. I said it wasn't even fun for me. It wasn't entertaining. Um, I think I think we'll beat Serbia. Uh, I don't think it will be that close. I think eventually it'll be 10, 15-point win, um, hopefully, because it does really seem like the Americans have got it figured out. Uh, I, I just got to say, not a big fan of Steve Kerr. I'm not. I'm just not. I never have been, um, and 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 I, I can't exactly put my finger to it. I think uh, there's the almost cockiness of of I just I don't think he's that good of a coach. It just doesn't no, feel um, just doesn't feel like a coach. And and I think Anthony Edwards has some uh, some disdain towards him a little bit, especially with the, the pre draft workout. Um, I remember him saying, you know. I, I think he was nonchalantly doing something in a workout or, or, or something. And Steve Kerr said, Hey, Steph Curry never does that or whatever. And Anthony Edwards is better than Steph Curry right now. So I think, I you know, think Steph, Steph has been the worst. I, I think Steph has been the, the, he's been the weakness. Like they always say, you know, it's the weak link in the, in the chain. Steph has shown me nothing in this entire tournament. And, and that's one of the problems. And yes, I'm biased. I love Anthony Edwards. Okay. I do, but I can't understand why he is not starting on this team. I, I just don't, I don't get Curry and Booker over Edwards at all. And, and maybe it's because Edwards can bring that off the bench, you know, but, but Curry turns the ball over. He has not been putting up, you know, 30 points or whatever, because he's lights out shooter. His defense has not been great. I don't get it. Booker. I don't understand. You know, like after their, I think it was after their second game, they had Don Staley. And like, what a great job, Devin Booker. Why? Because you guys look like your brother and sister. You're going to hype Devin Booker over Anthony Edwards. I don't understand that. And, um, you know, you get back to Kirk, Steve Kirk. Oh, I just have such a hard time being able to, uh, know how to get, because, one, I think it was the second game as well. Tatum and Halliburton didn't even play the entire game. And then he came back and I don't know how to be able to manage these guys minutes. And other than the women, you don't hear a lot coming out of the men's camp about shit. I didn't get my minutes or I didn't get this, that, or the other thing. Give me, give me the ball. Um, but Kerr's been complaining about it. And he, and he seems like he's got a pretty good rotation um, going right now. So, I do think, I, I mean, I just, I watched a lot of Serbia's games uh, in this tournament and I, I don't think that they have enough uh, to, to give us a huge threat, but then again, you don't know, you, you don't, I mean, that's why you play the games. Right. And you know, it, you never know with Jokic at, at this point. I mean, he's just a, it's, he's an animal. Um, but when you think about it, I mean, Jokic, you can at least in the regular season NBA, you know, you can play off some some weak matchups and whatever. Um, but you know, you you sub out LeBron for for KD and then for Anthony Edwards and Anthony Davis. Like, there's no you're not taking a possession off. And I think you we've seen Jokic uh, can get very tired. Um, and I think that's what this this team does. I mean, you just rotate through stud after stud after stud. Yeah. Um, and they figured out the offense. So, I mean, I I don't think there's a team. France is the only one that I'm like, I could see a little bit of a, a tougher matchup just because, you know, it's it's home court advantage essentially um, for, for them. And and they got some good good players. But just this team, I don't there's I don't see an avenue to, to not getting a gold medal at this point. Yeah, right. And and you know, and as I'm watching right now, uh France is up by five with about eight minutes left in the game. Um and I'll be honest, I 
if we're going to the gold medal game, I mean, Germany honestly thought that they had a real shot at gold medal. And I'm not saying that they're going to, they're going to lose this game against France right now. I guess if, if I want to see a gold medal game, I'd like to see France just because <clears throat> they're a team that we have not seen in this tournament yet. We've beaten Serbia. We've beaten Germany <clears throat> already. Um, so, I mean, I, I would like to see that, uh, but here's the thing. Serbia is not, it's not a done deal because Serbia does have a set offense that they will play. Uh, and if they're hitting shots, because they do like to shoot, shoot the ball from outside. And if they're hitting, um, that could be a problem, uh, depending, depending on, I, I don't know. I mean, um, then the, the other thing I, I was like, when I watched the first game, uh, that the Americans played, and all the whistles and the booze for Joel Embiid. And I, I had no idea. I was like, oh, wow, Europe just doesn't like him because he's a chotch. Did you know why why they were booing him so so rampantly? Uh, well, is it because he didn't go play for his home country? or? Well, so he could have played on three different teams, is, is, is the word right. that I got. And he chose the United States or... He could have played for the Republic of Congo, but apparently he said there's no chance of us making the Olympics. So he said no, even though I don't, I don't know. And, and then he could have played for France, the host nation, even though he never lived a day in France, right? And they really thought he was going to play for them, and that was the the whole the whole deal. Um, here I just thought they're like, wow, they just don't like Joel, but whatever. Well, guess what? Neither do we. I, I got to agree with you, man. I mean, there are some guys on this team. Now, you know how I feel about LeBron. Not a big fan. But I'm okay with LeBron being on this team, okay? But there are a lot of guys that I, I – Anthony Davis, okay? Joel, I'm not a big fan of. Seth – or Steph, I don't think, should even be on this team. Um, not a big fan of Devin Booker either. Really not. You know, I like Drew Holiday. I do. I mean, I, there's there's some guys that I do like on this team. Uh, uh, what's it? Uh, Derek White. I didn't even know about this guy until this until the Olympic team, and I really like him. Like he has earned uh, to me, he's earned minutes, and and I I kind of like watching that guy play. Yeah, that that Celtics team has a lot of good studs. When I mean, Derek White came out of, I don't want to say came out of nowhere, but he was a San Antonio Spur for a while um, goes to 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 Boston. I think at the trade deadline and just absolutely destroy like just a defensive wizard. Um, you know can can score the ball a little bit, um, but he's he's been good. I I, I like uh, I like Jason Tatum. I like Tyrese Halliburton as well. Yeah, um, and there, White, White gets more minutes team. than Tatum. White gets more minutes than Tatum. I mean, I, I don't know, yeah, I don't like, know. why That's Al Burton and Tatum are at the end of the bench. I, I don't, you know what I mean? But like, and, and you wonder if that's politics or not, um, you know, because now we'll, we'll switch to uh, the women's side of the game. Like you talk about not entertaining, you know, and, and yeah, you want to, I don't know if you want to go down that road either, but basically the American women are, Bigger, stronger, more athletic than any team that they're going to see in this tournament, man. And and so, however, they're going to be controversy again because I just saw that. Uh, I, I didn't watch the game. Oh, I watched a little bit of the game, uh, I think, against Nigeria yesterday. Diana Taurasi did not start. Her first time not starting, I think she said, like, till. 2006 or something like that. Oh, but we just care that we're going to win the gold medal. That's all wrong. I th there's going to be some beef. I think about it. Now, Cheryl Reeb said, Oh no, we'll figure it out when we get to the medal um, rounds or whatever. And you know, this, this uh, lineup isn't set in stone, but we've talked about it before and we know how these ladies can be. Tarasi got a, she got a lot of pride. And so to not be starting on a gold medal team, man, I'm just waiting for the, the claws to start sharpening and, and for them to, to them to start, uh, I don't know, picking, picking at each other because 
it, it, it seems like there is more competitiveness and selfishness in that, in the women's side of this team than the men's side. Your thoughts on that? Well, there, there is in WNBA too. Like it, there's just always something to deal with uh, over there. And, and I, I don't know. It, it's just not, it, I've never, I have not watched a game uh, of the, of the women's, Olympic basketball team this year. Um, so I, I, to be honest, I didn't even know we were in the semifinals. I, I paid attention to the yeah. men's well, games. Uh, well, no, the, the, the men are in the semis. The women just won the quarterfinals. So they're going, yeah, they're going into the semis. Um, but, you know, good, good luck. Like I say, those games had, had not, have not been entertaining at all because they are just so much bigger and stronger um, than than any than any team that they have faced and and so like you know like when I saw Japan these little five foot six uh, just pumping shots from three point range um, just to try to keep up with them I like admirable but I I don't see our women women losing at all and they I don't know they haven't. They haven't lost a game since Barcelona or something like that. That's a long time ago. So, all right, man. Uh, for U.S. basketball, both men and women's, for U.S. athletics all the way across the board, Twins baseball, Vikings football coming up. Uh, I wouldn't say, you know, necessarily great things in our future, but interesting things nonetheless. Would you not agree? Yeah, definitely uh, definitely interesting is the, is the best word to put it at. All right, buddy. Well, for Noah Storzinger, I've been your host, Johnny Voss, and it's Toad Be Name Later podcast. We will see you next time.